Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video I'm going to talk about how to make a matrix style digital rain animation using your Sna engine. So the Matrix franchise is a great movie series consisting of three movies, The Matrix, The Matrix Reloaded, and The Matrix Revolution, and I'm a big fan of the movie series and I've watched uh, the movie series many times. So now going to Warner Brothers Pictures, the maker of the franchise, Matrix 4 is scheduled to go in theaters at the end of the year. That's really exciting, and I'm really looking forward to that. I always, uh, I'm always fascinated with the digital rain scenes in the movie, and I think it's very cool. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can make a matrix-style digital rain animation using only one image, and I hope you like it. So this is the image that we're going to use, and you can download the image from the link shown in the description below. All right, so now let's jump into our code. So since we're using Yersna Engine, we want to import the Yersna module. So we can write from Yersna import star. And let's create a window. App is equal to Yersna and app.run. Alright, now that we have this, let's create a cube entity. So cube is equal to an entity. And we're going to set the model to a cube since we want to create a cube. And we could scale this cube, and I'll set the scale equal to something like 7, 5, 6 on the x and y, uh, x, y, and z coordinates. And now I'm going to add a texture, and this texture is going to be the uh, image that you probably downloaded. And so mine is going to be in a folder called img, and it's called digit rain.png. So now I'm just going to save this and run what we have. And here we see that we have a cube, and the texture on this cube is, well, the uh, image, the texture. So now that we've created this one cube, I'm going to add another cube. So I'm going to have cube2 is equal to entity. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to set the model equal to a cube, because I want this to be a cube. I'm going to set the color equal to color.rgba uh, 255, oops, 255. 255 and 128. I'm going to add a scale, and this scale is going to be 7.5, 5.6.5. And I'm adding another texture, or the same texture actually. So image digit rain.png. And I'm also going to create an empty list. And this list is going to be called cubes. And all I'm going to do is store uh, these two cubes in this list. So I can just write cubes.append cube, cubes.append cube2. And I just wanted to uh, note that this second cube is going to use the same image as a texture, and it is larger in the x and z uh, coordinates than the first cube. And this is because we wanted to surround the first cube. And so this RGBA parameter uh, now has four values instead of uh, three with the RGB. Um, but these first three parameters are the same as the uh, normal RGB uh, parameters that you use it for. And this is because we've added another component. And this fourth component is transparency. And just like the color, transparency also goes from 0 to 255, where 0 means completely transparent, and 255 means completely opaque. And that just means you can't see through it. So in this work, we set the transparency parameter as 128, and now it's just semi-transparent. So if I run this, we'll see that the image is well, a little blurry. And here you see that the image is a little blurry. Cool. So now let's create an update function. So I'm going to go up here, create an update function like this. And I'm going to have two variables down here in my main called the offset. So this first offset is going to be the for is going to be for the first cube, and I'm going to have a second offset, so offset two, and this is going to be equal to zero for the second cube. And now in this update function, I'm going to declare those global variables, so uh, global offset, offset two, and now I'm going to set offset is equal to the previous offset plus time dot dt multiplied by point three, and remember that this global Remember that this update function is called once per frame, and so I'm increasing these. I'm increasing the offset by time dot dt multiplied by 0 
And I'm going to do the same thing with offset 2. So offset 2 is equal to offset 2 plus time by dt multiplied by 0.4 instead. And I'm going to call it set ATTR cube uh, texture offset and 0 with the offset. I'm going to do the same thing but with cube 2 texture offset 0 offset 2. Cool. And so uh, here we created two global variables offset and offset 2 which uh, will keep the textures offset. And now the set ATTR or set attribute command line this assigns the new texture offset to the entity. Now this texture offset parameter has the X and Y components, which are these. And here we only update the Y component because we want the rain, we want the rain to basically just fall down in only the Y direction. And so that's why it's zero in the X coordinate because we don't want it to move in the X direction. So now if I run this, we should see that the rain is just falling down. And there you go. And this is because we move the texture or the rain image in the second cube a little bit faster than the first cube. And this thus gives us an illusion that the rain is falling at different speeds. Cool. So now let's add a rotation to the cubes to get a 360 degree view. And uh, by doing this, we need to add rotation in the Y coordinate. So in this update function, uh, let's iterate through this cubes list that we created before. So for entity and cubes, I'm just going to rotate each cube inside of this cubes list. So entity.rotation underscore y is equal to entity.rotation underscore y plus time.dt multiplied by 5. And now if I save this, we see that our cube is rotating. And this is just the end of this video. And with this, we have success successfully created a matrix style digital rain using just one image. And so I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.